Imagine him one on one. Goff throws, pass caught, cup. Room to run, still going. Cooper Cup. What a touchdown for the Rams. Brilliant catch and run. We'll switch over to the LA Rams, the weird team of the group. Um I mm, we'll get right into the offseason. I'm not a fan. I uh I mm, they lost Corey Littleton, you know, they cut Todd Gurley, Clay Matthews, which you know, Clay Matt cutting Clay Matthews is a good idea, Todd Gurley probably, but they didn't do anything to replace any of them. Like there was no off season moves. And I think the biggest loss of theirs was kicker Greg Zerloin. <laughs> I love this guy for the for the people that don't know, I love this guy. He's my favorite kicker. But I mean he, he was hitting fifty yarders plus, you know, he he can change a game. Um I was just joking about it being the most important thing, but um, you know, they didn't really add I mean, I think the best thing they did this off season was re signing Andrew Whitworth, who's an older offensive lineman. He's still great. I love the guy. He was a bangle early in his career, but that's like, I mean, when you, when their best, you know, off-season moves are signing an old offensive lineman, it's not, it's not that good. Yeah, I think that they had about as disastrous as an off-season as you can have. Mm-hmm. I mean, Corey Littleton, they should have found a way to keep the guy on the roster. He's yeah. so insanely talented, um, and they didn't really replace him. Uh, right. Dante Fowler Jr., it was probably good that they didn't re-sign Dante Fowler Jr. just because he was so expensive. Um, mm. So, you know, I actually have that as a good departure, even though he's yeah. a good player um, and it creates a whole – I think he's just very expensive. Um, Greg the Leg Zerline, I, I don't know why they cut him. I, uh, quite honestly, I think he's one of the better kickers in the league. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking at him versus the other kickers they have yeah. available – I don't know about that. I mean, there's not really any good options out there. Um, you know, so I think that's another big loss too. And I think um, Nikel Roby Coleman is actually, you know, he was a re- really underrated player. He He's one of the best slot corners in the league. They lost him as well. They lost him to the Eagles. Um, and while I think that it wasn't bad in principle for them to cut Todd Gurley, I think Todd Gurley um, is getting probably towards the end of his career, unfortunately, with his knee issues. We'll see what happens to him this year with the Atlanta Falcons. But the reason it doesn't make sense to me is that they incurred a $20 million dead cap hit. It doesn't make sense to me. They're still paying $20 million for the guy. You you might as well keep him. Um, So that didn't make sense to me. And then uh, Clay Matthews, you know, the guy doesn't, didn't have much production last year. He's washed Mm -hmm. up. He's on the older side. His career is pretty much over. Um, It made sense for them to get Mm -hmm. rid of him. Yeah. I mean, the draft wasn't. I mean, it was it was bad, but they didn't have first round pick. I think it was smart to take running back Cam Akers in the second round to replace Agreed. Todd yeah. Gurley. It'll be interesting to see what he does. And they picked up in the fourth round a sleeper, one of my favorite uh, wide receivers out of the draft, Van Jefferson. Um, I think he will be an uh, interesting uh, pair with the wide receiver core that they have. So overall, I'm giving them a C minus. Um, I think even a D plus is, you know, appropriate, but. You know, they just – just bad management, bad money, you know, placing. The, the, the It's bad when cutting players is a positive, you know. Like, it's – that's, that's – yeah. yeah, when that's the highlight of your season, you know. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, they were poised to win a Super Bowl. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of the reasons I think that he's so overrated, Jared Goff kind of choked. The offense kind of choked. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they didn't show up and, and they didn't win. And I think at this point, you're looking at a roster that's in decline. You're looking at a team that's in decline. I don't think they're going to go 9-7 and seven again this year. Their off-season grade, in my mind, is a C-minus as well, maybe a D-plus. I mean, they signed Leonard Floyd, um, you know, and, and he's a good pickup to replace Dante Fowler, but he's not going to have the, the sacks that Dante Fowler Jr. had. You know, he's going to be a run-stopper. And then something strange, very strange, happened in this off-season. Um, Michael Brockers originally was not going to resign. He's, he's a defensive lineman. And then he changed his line, his mind, excuse me. 
And in that time, they signed Ashawn Robinson, who is another defensive lineman. Mm-hmm. So they signed all these defensive linemen. They signed Leonard Floyd. They signed Ashawn Robinson. They, they signed, re-signed Michael Brockers. But the issue is, you know, I'm looking at that defensive line, and I was looking at some analysis on it. Those guys aren't going to mesh really well. Your versatility on the defensive line, you know, isn't going to be great. None of those guys are big sack guys. A, a lot, you know, they're, for the most part, run stoppers. So yeah. they have a very, very strange um, defensive line, and their hands got tied by Michael Brockers, who was saying, uh, no, I'm not going to resign. And then he said, yes, I'm going to resign. Right. Um, but, yeah, just bad, bad off season. Mm-hmm. There's t- only two positives I can really get out of this. I think they had, you know, a, a good draft, an A or a B-plus draft. Cam Akers, really good replacement for Todd Gurley. Again, Van Jefferson. I think he's going to end up being a really good player. It was just a great wide receiver draft. So that was a good pick. Um, I think that that's my one positive. And then my second positive is, you know, there's a lot of teams who get worse and they have all this, you know, all these players who are getting older and aren't effective and they're spending so much money on. Sometimes you just have to realize where you're at as a team on the decline and just rip the bandaid off and start to gut your team a little bit. Uh, you know, one team that I think of is the Philadelphia Phillies, where they went to all these, you know, these World Series appearances. They had this great mm-hmm. team, but they held on to guys like Chase Utley and Jimmy Rollins and Ryan Howard for, for way too long. They were way past their expiration date. This is not what the Rams are doing. Mm-hmm. They're just ripping off the Band-Aid, and they're kind of speeding things up so that they can try to build around Jared Goff, who they think is their franchise quarterback. They have an aging offensive line. I mean, they re-signed those guys, so they didn't rip off the Band-Aid completely. Um, but, you know, they, they they cut a lot of guys. I mean, they got rid of Marcus Peters um, earlier, uh, yeah. you know, mid, mid-season. So I think that they're kind of starting to rip off the band That is a positive, but it's mm-hmm. a pretty bad omen for this upcoming year. I right. really think they're going to take a, a big dive, as we'll see as we're, looking at, um, as we're looking at their schedule, which we're about mm-hmm. to get into. Yeah, and uh, my two positives are the wide receiver core that the um, – that the Rams have. They've got Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, and now Van Jefferson. I think that that's a nice trio right there. Um, it'll be dangerous. Unfortunately, no Brandon Cooks. Um, and I think the other positive um, is the potential of two breakout stars on the defense. You got Aaron Donald, who had a little bit of a regress last season compared to his you know defensive player of the year season the year before that. But he's still Aaron Donald, and he'll still you know do amazing. But like you said, there's going to be a weird chemistry between that line. And we're really not sure how it's going to work. And Jalen Ramsey, just for the record, I do not like Jalen Ramsey. Uh, maybe it's because, you know, A.J. Green's my favorite player. But um, he was horrible last year. And everybody's like, oh, he was a, he blocked passes or whatever. He had zero interceptions. And even if you're blocking passes or whatever, you should, be, yeah, you should at least have one. And he, he for the really money that they're paying him, yeah. Yeah, he should be at, you know, Devin McCourty, you know, Stephon Gilmore level. You know, like, he should be having that those numbers. Um but he didn't, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. And, you know, following that, let's hop right into the schedule. Um, they got a tough first game against the Cowboys. I think whether you're a boomer bust on the Cowboys, I think you can't really see the Rams pulling off a win here. Um, I've got the Cowboys winning this one. Yeah, I do too. I think that, I mean, again, Dallas Cowboys, in my mind, aren't going to be as good as everybody has them hyped up to be. But I think the Rams are going to be even worse. And I know they went nine and seven last year, but yeah. they really just didn't play well. They, you know, they they had a lower than probably expected season as far as their outcome. And I think this one, they're, again, they ripped off the bandaid a little bit. They're probably going to take a dive this year. I have them losing in Week One to Dallas. Mm-hmm. And Week Two, not making it any easier. The two big titans of the NFC East, they're playing the Eagles in Philadelphia. I think. Even if it was the 2018 Rams that went to the Super Bowl, they'd have trouble going into Philly to play the Eagles. Um, so I have them losing here, too, starting the season 0-2, not looking good for them. Yeah, they don't play well against the Eagles. They don't match up well against them. I mean, in the last couple of years, they've lost to the Eagles twice at home. Um, they lost They lost to the Eagles even when they went to the Super Bowl mm-hmm. two years back. Um, and they lost to the Eagles in... 2017, I believe. Yeah, that big game. 2017, when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, they they lost to the Eagles. Um, that was the game that Carson Wentz went down. Um, but they they lost at home that game too. They don't match up well against them, and I don't think it gets any easier um, in in a down year 
and, you know, being on the road. Mm-hmm. Another, that is a brutal start for the Rams. They're playing the Bills now in Buffalo, and it's the Bills. The Bills are taking this one. They're, they're you know, they're going to be a much improved team next year, and I don't really see the Rams winning. So then 0-3 start for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm not high on the Rams this year, but I don't think that they're going to start 0-3. Mm-hmm. I actually think that they get a win here against the Bills. Mm-hmm. I just don't see the Bills. I mean, I have the Bills winning a couple other games against this division. I don't see them winning all their games against this division. So I have this one as a win mm-hmm. for the for – the, for, sorry, not the 49ers, for the Rams. Rams. I have kind of like your thing, and I don't think they'll start the season 0-4. So I have them beating the Giants week four in L.A., Um, I think the Giants will still be improving. I think they'll get better as the season starts. I think the Rams, just desperation will hit, and they'll pull out a desperate win here against the Giants, a much-needed win. And maybe I'm sleeping on the Giants. I probably am. But then again, it is the Giants who held on to Eli Manning for 50 years. So (laughs) you never know what you're going to get with the Giants. Yeah, I have this as a win against the Giants, too, um, for the same reasoning as the Buffalo Bills. I think the Giants will pull off you know, a couple games against this division, uh, maybe one or two, you know, that's on the, that's probably on the hot, you know, two is probably on the high side, maybe one, just because, you know, this is a good division. Um, but I actually have the Rams winning this one uh, against New York. I, you know, I'm, I'm predicting them to have points in their season where they play like the team, you know, that they did last year because, right. you know, that team isn't entirely gone. There's still elements left of that team. So while I think this is going to be a down year for them, I think that they will have stretches where they do play well. So I think this will be two back-to-back wins with the Bills and the Giants. Mm-hmm. And their their next game is against in Washington, and I don't think they're going to lose that game. I, I'll be honest; it, it stinks being a Bengals fan, but I know that the Washington Red Tails uh, will always be worse than the Bengals <laughs> next season. And I don't think the Red uh, the oh, I missed the Redskins. I don't really know what they're going to do. You know what? Let's just call them Washington because George Washington. I don't think they're. Uh, I don't think they're going to lose this game, and I think the Rams will win this. So they're going two and three to start the season. Yeah, I agreed. I have the Rams winning this one too, which means that they actually have a, a three a three wow. win stretch here. <laughs> um, so I think that they, I think they get off, you know, to a start that's three and two. Um, but I will spoil it a little bit and say it doesn't go uphill from here. I mean, they're playing the the 49ers next at home or in uh, San Francisco, so their winning you know streak will come to an end here. I don't think there's any world where the 49ers lose to the Rams at home. So I've got the Rams losing this one. Agreed. That's a loss. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple yeah. explanation there. Yeah. I mean, next you got the Bears playing the Rams in LA, and I don't know what the deal is with the Bears. They draft 10 tight ends when, you know, I don't get them at all. They're super confusing. I don't think that the Bears have, I don't even know, they don't even know if it's Mitchell Trubisky, you know, Nick Foles, you don't know who's starting. And Jay Cutler could come back, you know, <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um, so I actually have the Rams winning this one. The Bears are just a bigger mess than the Rams right now. They just don't have the raw talent that the Rams have. Yeah, I mean, same result for me. Pretty much the same reasoning. I just don't know how they're going to put this all together. Look, I mean, Nick Foles could show out and just end up being the superstar again. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not the Eagles, so I don't really yeah. expect that. And I do expect him to keep going with Mitch Trubisky. I, maybe he'll get benched at some point during the season. I'm not, I'm not big on Mitch Trubisky. I don't really think anybody is at this point. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I have this as a win uh, for the Rams against the Bears. The, the saddest thing is that Patrick Mahomes – and Deshaun Watson were drafted after Mitchell Trubisky, which is just so sad to hear. Uh, but anyway, yeah, going into the – yeah, that's bad. But the, the, going into the last week before the bye, they're playing the Dolphins in Miami. And once again, call me a Dolphins hater. I'm, I'm, I'm not sold on the Dolphins. I don't care how many people they sign. They're still the Dolphins. Unless Fitzmagic is starting every game, you know, they're not winning any. No, I'm just kidding. But I have the, uh, the Rams winning this one. I just think that – Tua will be overwhelmed by the uh, sheer might of Aaron Donald. I think that um, he's a rookie. He's going to be terrified of seeing that monster, that thing coming at him. Um, but that's not the only thing that I have, the reason I have. But I just think that the Rams will take this one to put their, uh, before they're by 4-4. Four four. You know what? I am taking the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> I, I know that you're not really high on them, but I think they'll be around an 8-8 eight and eight team. Um, maybe seven and nine. So I'm going to actually take the Dolphins in this one against, again, 
a team in the Rams that I think is going to struggle against good teams mm-hmm. and against bad teams. Yeah. Um, Miami Dolphins will probably, my guess is around average. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's pretty possible that they're below average, but I still have the Rams struggling against even bad teams yeah. or, and average teams this year. I think it's the loss to the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Then they have their bye, and they're playing the Seahawks in L.A. And to stay, you know, true to my other schedule, I have the Rams winning this one, squeaking it out. It's always close between the Seahawks, um, and I think that the Rams will pull this one off. Yeah, again, I have the Rams losing both their games against the Seahawks. Um, so I have this as a loss for them. I think they're going to get beat up in this division pretty bad this year. So I have this as a loss against the Seahawks. Yeah, and – it doesn't get any easier than there. The Rams are playing the Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. And whether you're on the Tampa Bay hype train or not, I think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of last year could beat the Rams. Like, I, I just don't see, you know, the Rams being able to, even, you know, even if Brady is a bust and Gronk is, you know, old, which I think he will be, I still think that the Buccaneers will pull this one off. Um, they've got a great wide receiver core. So I got the, the Rams losing this one. I have the Bucks winning this one. Trust me, I'm not somebody who thinks that the Buccaneers are going 13-3 and three and, and winning the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm, yeah. I have them at about an 8-8 eight and eight team. I mean, I know they have a lot of offensive weapons. I know they have yeah. Tom Brady, they have Gronk now, they have all those wide receivers, but their defense is just still not very yeah. good at all. Um, so I, I have this one as a win for the Rams over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I've got uh, – and the next is the 49ers coming to L.A. Again, just like I had earlier, Rams aren't winning this game. Um, so – they're going to get their uh, butts kicked. <laughs> yeah, same here. I have, this, I, I have this as a loss against San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, and then they got uh, – that's two two division games in a row with the Cardinals coming into Arizona, and I don't think that the Rams will be playing Arizona um, – or will be playing in Arizona very well. I think that the Rams will lose this one again. So that's a three-loss uh, three, uh, three loss stretch for them. Yeah, I'm going to make a two in a row in my book. I have the Cardinals winning this game as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they play the Patriots. And regardless of if you think the Patriots will flop or not, I, I still think that Cam Newton, you know, their defense can and Bill Belichick can carry them to beat the Rams here. Uh, it certainly won't be – I hope it's not as boring as the Super Bowl was when they played, um, but I don't think that the Rams will be winning this one. So that's actually 0-4 four, oh four for me. Wow, yeah. I mean, I I have the losing streak continuing on this end, too. I have the Patriots winning uh, and capping off this losing streak at three games. Yep, and then they play the New York Jets um, in L.A. And, I mean, the Jets, like you said, they're a mess. I think that the Rams will be able to squeak this one out. Um, They just have more talent, you know, whether or not they've got bigger holes or not. But I just think that they'll be able to beat the Jets here. Yeah, the Jets are just an awful team. So I think that this is a win. I think they have to win at some point during this late stretch of the season. So I have a win against the Jets, too. Mm-hmm. And they're playing Seattle in Seattle. <laughs> and uh, I don't think – I think they'll go one and one I think they'll lose this game to Seattle. Yeah, I have them going 0-2 oh against Seattle. I think this is a loss as well. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the last game. They're playing the Arizona Cardinals in L.A., and I think this one, the Rams will win, I think, Week 17. Now, depending on, you know, what I'll have to say about the Cardinals, whether or not either of them are making a playoff push, you know, whether they're trying or not, I think that the Rams might be able to squeak this one out against uh, Arizona. I have this as a loss against Arizona. Look, I think that part of the reason that the Rams are just not going to be that great this year is because they are going to play a really – they're in a really good division, mm-hmm. um, and they're not one of those really good teams. So I think that they're going to take a lot of losses against the, those teams this year. I think they're going to struggle against their own division. I have them losing to Arizona. Yeah, and so for my record, I have them going 7-9, and nine, which I think is a little high. I think they'll more drift towards the 6-10. and 10. Um, But they were a 9-17 and 17 last year, which some people forget. I have them going 2-4 and four in the division. They're not going to win a lot of games in this division. It's a tough division. Yeah, I have them going 6-10. and 10. I just don't think they're going to be a very good team. I think they're going to get beat up on in this division. Seven. Goff. Fires. Caught. And free is Reynolds. And Reynolds takes the ball to the 22-yard line. Five wide here on a second down and 13. And Goff to the end zone or close to it. Caught at the four-yard line by Gerald Everett. Spot the ball at the four. Give the ball to Brown, and Brown takes it in for a Rams touchdown. 